check it? Yeah. Fine. <laughs> okay. Fine. Those the viewers online, I think <laughs> now is the right time. We are straight now. Okay. Fine. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, I was talking about yeah, finally they can see us straight. Now. Okay, I was talking about the later startup page which we created that was open source. So we went ahead and added a lot of screens, a uh, lot of reusable screens, which is like generic across multiple applications. Uh, we called it Native Startup Pro, and it was a premium product. We priced it at fifty dollars, uh, and till date we have sold about three hundred fifty copies of that. Uh, and it's it was a hit. Uh, we got attention from Facebook and the developers of React Native as well. They were like, dude, we open sourced it. We are not making money. And they were like, okay, you are making money, fine, <laughs> great. Then uh, we created a lot of uh, starter kits and other apps. I think something can talk about the clone apps. Yeah, actually, we created clones. Actually, not exact clones. Some of them were just UI templates. Like we created an e-commerce starter where there were products on display. People could integrate their own backend to that. Actually, we were just providing the UI view for that. So that was one of them. Then we had a Uber clone, which is called Taxi app. This also had a backend. So like we just created the UI at first, and then we got requests from people that we need a backend with that as well. So we created a backend with that. And what else was the Tinder app? Yeah, we have a Tinder app actually, where people can swipe left or right. <laughs> Nobody swipes left, right. <laughs> we just keep swiping. So that was it. Just UI clone. So uh, with I think Tinder app we have also created a backend. Yeah, back in the yeah. Update. it's launching next week. Yeah, he, no one has created that. Yeah, it's the guy behind that. Yeah. <laughs> so that is like in the back end. So Sanket can tell more about the Uber back end. Yeah, so we created clone of Uber, where it, it, uh, we integrated with the GPS uh, and all those native APIs. Uh, it was both like we wanted to sell it as a product and also to test the possibilities of React Native. And it was a successful product, and we have sold about 10 copies of that uh, with the backend, and it's priced at thousand dollars. So it's successful in both the terms. We uh, like uh, went ahead and tried a lot of different stuff and a premium product. And, uh, There's a web uh, dashboard. Yeah, yeah, and also we have a web dashboard and all those things. The backend is Node.js and HomoDB. Uh, and meanwhile, when we were doing this premium products, many we got a lot of criticism, yeah. like. You guys are doing it just for uh, like close community and you're not open sourcing this. So we thought, okay, it's a good time. Let's pick out the components which are reusable and open source those things. So it was then when we decided we'll uh, open source native base. We just pulled out components from that and called it native base. And we also have a lot of open source contribution. Uh, React Native Easy Grid, which Himanshu created. Uh, maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Actually, if you have worked with Flex, uh, Flex implementation in React Native. Uh, if you are new to it, it's uh, like pretty complicated uh, if you are coming from a CSS background. So uh, we were like, uh, we should uh, provide an easy way for people to uh, like create grids in their apps. Uh, so uh, this uh, React Native Easy Grid works like uh, you have a grid component, you have column and row components, and uh, if you just use uh, two columns inside grid, so uh, your screen will be divided into two, uh, two columns. So it, it's uh, pretty easy. You just have to, like, in declarative way, you can uh, have columns and rows. Like so any of us have used Bootstrap before? We have these columns and rows. So that's what we tried to achieve with this rows and columns. We two rows and one that and columns. So it's like there are issues that people keep raising issues in this. We're trying to fix that, but that is. Native base as like we're trying to. This is also like a bootstrap with variables and buttons mm -hmm. and separate components. Yeah. So a uh, few people have also said like native base is the bootstrap of React Native. Uh, so we had put this comment and we put this on our website, and then somebody came and that's a really arrogant statement. <laughs> like okay, fine, we'll remove it. Then, uh, yeah, native base today it has got about 2,650 2, stars, GitHub stars. So that is really, I mean, a uh, breakthrough for us. Yeah, like very hardly people star a repository. We keep doing npm load dash, but we never go and hit star. Yeah. So it's like 2,600 stars. Yeah, it, it's uh, like a lot for us. Yeah, for us actually. But then we start off, we never expected. Yeah. How many controls do we have on native base? So native base right now it has about uh, 25 components, 20 to 25 yeah. components. 
So all the basic components like navigation bar, headers, buttons, drawers, then list items, then so the forms, inputs, icons. I think like everything you need for a basic app, we have there with some bug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the is only only mobile, right? Yeah, database is just for React Native. Yeah. But there is a version of React Native called React Native Web in which you can use the same code to work on the web as well. Somebody has ported native yeah, base to okay. React Native for web and he has detailed it like really nice and people are actually using that as well. So their documentation is better than ours. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we have a kitchen sink app and to do app uh, which is like a, um, like compilation of all the components. Yeah. Of so, so just to yeah. let people get started and see how the components work. Yeah. We have a very nice wall of it at the React Native Database C, which we use for all our projects. Uh, maybe you can check it out. Yeah. Great, okay. So React Native is famous. Yeah. yeah. You have a question? Yeah. Maybe this has all the basic components. I mean, aren't these provided by, I mean, already there in React Native, whatever they are? Uh, no, most of them are not provided. And even if they are provided, they are native. Like, if you check Navigator, or if you check, say, uh, the header component. So we have Navigator iOS, which has that header component, which works only on uh, iOS. To write it for Android, you have to write separate code called Android Toolbar. Right? Mm -hmm. If you use NativeX, you can just use the header component, and it will work well for both the platforms. And you have platform specific design. Mm -hmm. I mean, React Native for Android, though, I mean, doesn't have these components, right? No, and it's, the, it's available with uh, native base kit, whatever you say. Yes, the problem is that the components are available uh, in React Native for header in iOS and for header in Android. But those two are two different components. Uh, but if you use native base, you can use just the header component, and you'll get the platform specific design. For iOS and Android on different platforms. It is same for both Android and iOS. Yeah, the code is the same. Because the same. Google has different specific design guidelines yeah. and Apple has their own design guidelines. Right. Mm -hmm. So to interpolate them, we'll, like, we'll have a single code base and in different devices it will look with their respective platforms. So that's what we try to do. Okay. Uh, native base is, is kind of upper layer over the uh, React Native. Yes. 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 So React Native provides lower level implementation. It Bridges your JavaScript code to the native uh, environment, and native base is at uh, is a top layer, a UI layer on top of React Native. Uh, uh, there is a problem with uh, my first screen will be in a, uh, like very uh, bushed up kind of thing, very uh, yes. slicky. Then next screen is, is it, it requires some uh, uh, mobile functionality. I mean mobile services, okay. camera and all these things. Yes. Can I collect this React Native code and uh, my uh, native native code? I use native. Code. Yes, we, we do that. Yeah, we have done that with our project. Yeah. Actually, the one which I just said about the Minta of Netherlands, yeah. where actually people can click photos of their uh, like things and then upload it to their app. Yeah. 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 Back end, uh, this uh, uh, native code will run. Yeah, back end. Actually, even React Native doesn't code it, just the wrapper around native code. Okay. So it doesn't matter whichever you are like, you are like, <coughs> There are a couple of more you are leveraging the active elements and some of them, yes. which are very nice. So they, I don't think they have this platform specific thing. Yeah, none of them have it. Yeah. So uh, Shouten UI and uh, the Active Elements, they are two other UI libraries, just like native base. Uh, but they have different guidelines and they have different designs. Right now with native base, what we have kept in mind is to follow the guidelines from Google and Apple so that it looks exactly like a native app. And at the same time, we also uh, allow a lot of customization, which I don't think Shouten UI and the... Uh, yeah. Uh, so we have a, a lot of customization, like uh, if you want no, it not to look like a native app, uh, or if you want the same design on both the platforms, you can easily do that with native. Okay, Great. any more questions? Okay. Fine. So some of the famous React Native projects. This is just to gain your trust in React Native. Okay, so I think, the one of the earlier one, earliest uh, apps which came was the Mintra app. So Mintra created their iOS uh, app in React Native, I think more than uh, a year ago, one and a half years ago, when it was very, very new. And that's when people started gaining trust. Even the Netherlands project where uh, uh, Shonko went, 
So they also saw this Mintra app and they had to build something like that. So they were very impressed with this technology and the performance. Uh, so Mintra is one of the apps and uh, then few parts of the Facebook app also use it, uh, React Native. These Airbnb yeah. actually, think recently, they added 108 new screens to their app. So Airbnb. Airbnb. Yeah. Okay. So, like they are also moving to React Native. 80% of the app now is in React <coughs> And then these three apps, Facebook Ad Manager, Groups, and Instagram, they are 100% built using React Native. And Vogue. By the Yeah. I think Vogue is built from React Native and it was in the top 10 iOS apps. It was rated by Apple. As one of the top 10 ISs, so I mean, it was built in React Native, so I think it is. Yeah. So, uh, out of these, how many of, uh, of them are uh, Android? Uh, they are compatible. Most of them are compatible on both the platforms. Airbnb is for both. Yeah, Instagram. Both right now is just for iOS. Mintra back then was for iOS. I am not sure now. I think it has Android as well. I think these three apps Facebook Ad Manager, Groups, and Instagram. They are 100% React Native and they work on both the platforms, the same code. Currently, Mintra standard is where home page is the React Native Home page. Home page. What is the home page? Okay. So they are moving towards that. That's a good move. Great. I think there are only few guys who have worked with React Native, but those who have worked with React Native can share their experience. What's your name, sorry? Ishwant. Ish Ishwant. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so, uh, uh, our company builds the CCD app, Coffee Day. Uh, so, we have actually built the native uh, Android and iOS app. And the difficulty that we are facing was uh, being a startup, uh, we are not able to ship both the apps uh, simultaneously. Uh, so, we sh uh, started development on React Native. Um, also trying to build a framework on top of it so that uh, we can quickly create any other app uh, if a uh, requirement comes to us. Okay. So, so far it's been good. Um, there are a lot of resources on my uh, developer community is good. Um, I guess most of the React, React Native developers uh, hang out in Discord. Uh, yeah, that's, Discord that's where I found them. Uh, so I built, uh, I think some of the screens are built uh, but uh, not a complete app yet. Um, yeah, that's pretty much my experience. Great. Anyone else? Um, my company, uh, Metric Stream, it, it, it is uh, basically a GRC based company, uh, governance, risk, and compliance. So they have this audit system. So uh, the thing is, they already have a web application for that, with complete, uh, complete uh, all the modular functions. So they are shifting towards mobile applications so that they can have uh, on-go uh, services that are easily available to persons uh, on the uh, to persons on their phone, right? So we are con we are completely over with the component library for that, and we are now uh, shifting towards screens. Uh, we are also working on uh, Windows applications for that. We are already uh, up for iOS and uh, Android. So that's. So, uh, uh, Mentor, so we have a product called TurboTax, which is about 25 to 30 million people in the US. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we have used React Native in the iOS and the Android world. Uh, so, we have actually almost 80 to 80 percent common code, you know, like you guys have done. Uh, the same code fits up, you know, Android and iOS native UI. So, uh, while we have uh, we have almost like 20,000 odd screens in the product, uh, we are doing this in a phase manner. Uh, we have you know, a subset of screens, uh, you know, if you uh, migrated to the new, you know, new platform, right? And so we have so the app native for Android iOS and our web player version, uh, which is actually a much bigger product that uses the React web version, React web, okay. React JS. So uh, I have a question for you. Uh, so you have the app in native and mm -hmm. you are moving few screens to React yeah. Native. And we are using the navigator, uh, native navigator. Uh, I don't know the details of the, like I said, I'm working on the desktop side. So okay. you know, this is the Android and iOS product. Okay. So personally, I haven't had a lot of experience working on it myself. Okay. But uh, I know, you know this is a significant effort that we are actually really committed to this. And I see so many you know, things happening in this area. Yeah. But we just going to keep on migrating more and more screens to use the new React Native. That's a good move, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, which backend are you using? 
Well, the market is actually a different economy altogether. So, I do think uh, to manage your 20,000 screens. Okay. So, uh, you're sharing the backend for the desktop and the yes. mobile? So, yeah, that's yes. actually shared. Yes. Um, so, it's mostly C++ because, uh, you know, uh, we need performance, we need screens to be in a uh, C++ for EK? Uh, so it's actually uh, all JSON based, uh, you know, screens. Okay. So uh, generally, it's because of Java. We have uh, it's a lot. Of <laughs> every single technology, you, you name it, it's all there. Right. We have a big combination. So it used to be JavaScript earlier. Now we use to generate on the UI. Mm -hmm. uh, then we move to Java. We have another C++ version coming up. So okay. everything. Yeah. Because yeah. So basically, right? Uh, we uh, on the desktop side, we have this requirement. You know, we want to build a new UI, a new feature. A small, you know, four five screens, not a lot. Uh, we want to share across Windows and Mac. So we said, you know, let's actually go with React web because React Native is not very good for the desktop version. Yeah. The React .NET, they're not mature enough. So we actually took React JS. You know, I've actually got to work in a little bit. Uh, a simple screen, nothing, you know, fancy stuff. But uh, finally, with the same UI, you know, one simple HTML, which was React underneath. We were able to, you know, provide that simple feature across Windows and Mac. Did you like React? Oh, it's lovely. <laughs> 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 I can't you know, wait to work on the animation. <laughs> awesome. I think there are some new people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was pretty difficult to find the case actually. Okay. Oh. <laughs> That's a good compliment. <laughs> What's your good name? Yeah, so my name is Alki Rip. Yeah. I, uh, so I work as a full stack developer for a startup called Veldi. So mainly I work on React, a bit of Angular, back end Angular. And um, React Native? Just about a start. Great, good to have you here. Just inside, then. <laughs> <laughs> I think some of you also came in there. Yeah, yeah. These yeah. two guys, guys. Yeah, me and Imran, uh, it's very easy. Uh -huh. uh, we are a startup, mobile startup. We are working on mobile uh, developer for last year. Fine. Okay, thank did you face when you started with React Native? We have a bunch of backend list. Maybe you guys can share something again. Uh, which navigation API to use? Yeah, okay, which navigation? Okay, navigation <laughs> is, is a problem. problem. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's number one problem in React Native. Then? State management? State management. Okay, how many of you have used Redux? Three, four, okay. And Mobix? Mobix? Bad day for me. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, how do you guys find readers? It's good? It's good? Yeah, it's, it's really good. Um, so uh, what I'm trying to do is um, more of a declarative way of defining the mm -hmm. UI. Mm -hmm. So there I'm finding some problems as to how uh, I need to store my Redux uh, mm -hmm. object. I am actually, we have tried uh, with the state management, we have tried Redux and Mobux as well. Mobux is a very nice observable uh, data management, state management, like which is picking up right now. And I am trying my level best to push it forward. <laughs> Great, okay. Next slide. So, the first. Is there any Facebook in any way? Actually, we, have, we are in touch with them. We are not uh, from Facebook, but uh, the core developers there. Like Mike Grabowski and uh, Devin Bot. So we are in touch with them. So we did one of the biggest problems with React Native is like a trust issue because you guys shut down cars. And that was like, <laughs> what is going to happen to React if you guys just like lift your hands up and go like, okay, we're going to get down. <laughs> yeah, that happened. I think there are startups which did shut down, especially uh, around React Native. There was a very nice startup which helped you uh, build and deploy apps easily. Uh, I, I can't recollect the name of that. But it happens, yes. But with native base, since it's open source and it has got good backing and number of stars and all those things, you can trust it. Okay, great. Okay, so the first problem which we had it was the building the user interface. Okay, I think someone is there. Ashwini. Okay, so building the user interface was a problem because it was pretty different from how it used to be uh, for the web. Uh, for the web, we used to write the CSS file separately and we used to use, uh, say, clear and uh, float left, float right, and all those things. But here, it was a different case. Uh, here, it used flex and it had 
actually it didn't have anything like bootstrap we were so used to use bootstrap and things like that so what this problem did you face so like with flex it was strange in a way like i knew flex before because i worked in angular material and angular material also is promoting flex so with that i had a little bit of idea but then from i was a web developer before so for me to get from css to suddenly flex it was a hard for me because like uh, there was no you couldn't float left if you wanted something to the left or to the right and then i got to learn flex and i think flex is the way to go now it's better than css because if you ever wanted to uh, vertically align something in the center you could never do that in normal css you had to put in a table and then do stuff like that but with flex it's just one line of code you can just specify content center and comes way to the thing so that is what helps in flex and other than that for building a ui you needed a button With React Native, there's no such thing called as a button. There was a touchable opacity, touchable highlight, and touchable without feedback. I think so. Yeah. And so like, we had to make it, make it look like a button. If I needed a button, I put in a touchable opacity and a text in there. Only the text was visible, nothing else was. So I had to like make it look like a button, and that's what was the problem I faced because like for everything I had to start from scratch. With HTML, we are used to writing buttons. Okay, let's put in a button. Hello world, wait, nice. We have a button. But there was no such thing in React Native, so that was one of the initial challenges I faced. But then we got over it. Sure. Yes. Uh, I read to the native with uh, API. So there are some form. There are a lot of components where I have found that we have hard coded the values, right? For like for internal uh, elements. Like yeah, maybe margins or something like that. Yeah, some margins. Hard coded. Yeah, yeah, some padding and margins we have hard coded in the sense that, like, if there is a button, we want the width of it to be half of the screen. <coughs> we keep it half of the screen, but then from the text there, there has to be a padding, right? Mm -hmm. Because the text might overflow. Yeah. So it the might stick to the ad yeah. edges, so that is not something desirable. So these are the parts we have hard coded, but I think lots of values are there are as variables. Where you can change the colors and the border radius. If you say if you want to circle the button or something, you can have an option. So I but think why he is concerned is more like uh, if we have hard coded, can we change it? If we want to change it, so yes, you can do it. You can pass your style object in that particular uh, component and then overwrite all those things. So whatever you pass in in the component, it will overwrite the default ones. Yeah, it won't matter. If, like if you see something is hard coded. We can just yeah, I've seen that you know, use a yeah, we can put your own style and we'll get over it and so on. This is just for the basis we get. Yeah, that's that's our default value. Yeah, that's the default value, but it's not that much. Yeah, and uh, we are also releasing a new version, uh, Native Base 2.0, and wherein the entire the styling uh, you can change each and everything. So you'll be provided with a style dot CSS file, something like that, uh, what you used to get for Bootstrap, where you can modify each and everything of the styling. Uh, sorry. You are using stylus for that? Uh, not stylus. We are using uh, a theming engine called Shoutem uh, Theme. So earlier we had this styling with every component. Now we have picked out the styling and moved all of them to a single file, much like uh, the CSS on the web. Uh, similar to stylus. Yeah, similar to stylus. Not in fact. Yeah. Okay. So the reason uh, Shoutem Theme. Shoutem slash theme. So to solve this, we created a database. That's it. Anything else? Okay. Next. Yeah, we have a question. Uh, I mean, Android. Uh, in Android, no, to for, to support multiple form factor devices, we used to have dimensions and vector variables. We will keep in a different dimensions so that uh, whenever the application is launching into a particular tablet or uh, a small device, HDPA, MDPA, low resolution, high high resolution. So here also the support is there. Whenever it yeah, combines, we are relying on the device width and device height. So like it calculates the device height by itself. So it, it isn't an issue for us. How wide or how? Uh, generally, during the APK generation, I'm not sure which device I'm going to install, right? Okay. So how so it will generate? What about the resolution? Yeah, resolutions and the multiple form factors. I don't think the components have anything to do with the resolution. I think when you add images or stuff to that, then only there's a chance of it breaking. Uh, example, I can say. There is one, uh, one screen, one screen with two partitions. Whenever it is launched in tablet, because tablet has more width. But in case of mobile, it is only one uh, one particular screen. If you click on on something, it will navigate to the second. But whenever using the tablet, both will be appear in the same, like less than less than details of the list item. So 
something like that. We don't have that. But so uh, react native. Uh, just clicking, it will go to the next page because it's mobile first. Oh, okay. No, no. Actually, uh, we have options for that. You can always put conditionals and build your view like that because React Native itself, it does not have a templating engine. So it's always code. Your but wherever you write your view, yeah, text not code. you can you can write conditionals wherever you want. And about the resolutions, uh, we have uh, something called DDP. Instead of pixels, we have DDP, which is uh, device independent pixels. So if you just give say uh, 25 DDP, so that's 25 something which you can measure, and it's equal on all the devices. It's independent of the uh, because something like inches or centimeter. Make sense? DDP is here. Yeah, DDP is uh, a higher level abstraction of pixels, wherein it's independent of the resolution of the device. So if you give say 100 DDP, it's always the same width on all the devices, irrespective of the resolution. Is what it is. Similar to pixel ratio. Yes, it's similar to pixel ratio. Yeah, the same thing you said in uh, Android also like DAP. What yeah. you were saying, DDP is a DAP. Yeah. DAP. Uh, but uh, whenever we want in terms of multiple screens together or separation of the screens, these kind of things we need to write uh, logic in yeah, terms of code. You can just write conditionals. You can write platform, dot, Android, or uh, iOS, and you can check the device uh, this thing. density. Uh, uh, yeah, density and landscape mode and all those things, and you can definitely do that. Okay. So finally, uh, one question is: Whenever React Native code, whenever it gets compiled to Android, mm -hmm. is it having anything called uh, resources? Uh, because I think I don't think so it can generate something called resources, right? Everything yeah. will be part of code only. Generate uh, Java I code. Think, I think we need to have those images and resources folder again. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so we have for splash screens and the icons we have separate. Only images. Yeah, only images. Only images. So it actually compiles to native. So whatever you have mm -hmm. in Android, it follows the same strategy. To pick the right image for a correct uh, dimension or resolution, it follows the same thing. A two X, three X, and whatever you have. I here in React Native, since it is based on JavaScript, we will be using maybe HTML related, right? Uh, CSS, you are telling about CSS files or whatever it is styling for. And in Android, it is like uh, themes and uh, styles.xml will be there. So will it be converted to relative relevant files? How uh, it is? Not really, it's done on the code level, code level. It's not on the XML level. Okay. But you need to have different uh, versions of the same image for Android and iOS code. Because it picks up and uh, then sends the exact uh, the required dimension which is needed for that particular purpose. Great, okay. Next problem state management. State management is a problem. Yeah, I said problem. Is really problem. How many of you have actually faced the problem of that? I think people have worked with React or React Native. Yeah. State management is a big can, can anyone of you tell what the state is? The sole store of the present state and State of the app, mm. it has like, it has provided the proper store that yeah. is sold to the state of the app. Yeah. So we have the user interface and then we have the data part. Mm. This data part goes to the components and the user interface is built using those data. So the data part is called the state of the application and the libraries and all those methods mm. used to uh, alter those state is called the state management. Okay, that's fine. Fine. So state management, uh, first of all, do we really need a state management? Okay. And then comes what are the different libraries uh, for solving this state management issue? So anyone of you here have worked with AngularJS? Angular? No AngularJS? Okay. So in Angular, it's pretty easy. There's nothing like uh, you have to struggle through data changes and all those things. You just create a service and import it in different components and just start making changes to that. And Angular will handle how this data is updated in the next component, okay? So storing data is never a problem, but data mutation, or whenever there's a change in the data and how it updates on the corresponding components is the problem, okay? Because say if there is a JavaScript object, say uh, var obj is equal to, which has x colon 5, you can do obj.x is equal to 10. That changes the data, right? But this data, might be used at different location on your component, okay? And those components needs to re-render themselves, right? So in JavaScript, we don't have anything like uh, setter, getter, by default, okay? So uh, to achieve something like that, we need another library here, okay? Which detects the change mutation or change, uh, any uh, data change, 
and it reflects on the on those properties. Okay. Basically, stage is needed because in like for a layman, what is it? Like when you go from screen A to screen B, you want the data from A to persist in page B. So if you have to, you fetch the data for A, you go to B, and if you have to fetch again, then that's not a very intelligent thing to do because we are wasting our resource there. So what Redux or any page management library does is that it stores the data locally. So you go to A, you fetch the data, you go to B, and then you get the data from the store, so that you don't have to make the XHR call again. So that's why it's useful to us. Great. So, uh, and you want to add something? Yeah. So we started out with uh, state management libraries. Uh, initially, uh, we just uh, started with Flux, Reflux, uh, Redux. We have tried all of them. So uh, when we started with the uh, Flux and Reflux, it was like uh, we had to write a lot of boilerplate code and yeah, we got the uh, basic uh, concept of uh, Flux architecture and all. It was good. It was like one-way data flow. So, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, when Redux came, so uh, even it, it has a, a lot of boilerplate code to do, but uh, uh, the implementation is very good and uh, it's easier to debug and one of the good things about Redux compared to other uh, state management libraries, it's, uh, it's, it has a single store. So all the data for all the st uh, state, state for your app resides in a single object. So whenever you want to change something, uh, uh, you just you don't have to mutate that uh, object, uh, you just uh, create a new state and uh, all the components will be re-rendered. Great. So, uh, a little bit of background. We started with uh, Flux architecture. Actually, when Facebook announced its Flux architecture, it was just a concept, and they just uh, released a video of that, like what it is, and they never came with a, an implementation. So right then, like there were like about hundreds of libraries which implemented that, and Reflux was one of them which we used. And slowly the community moved forward, and uh, this guy Dan came up with Redux which was way simpler than uh, other libraries. And later Facebook hired that guy. And so people gained a lot of trust because Facebook hired <laughs> that guy. Uh, and uh, so people started just using Redux. And I personally feel that it's much of a hype and you can achieve the same thing with other libraries as well in much more simpler way. I am a little biased towards using Mobux rather than Redux. So these two libraries which we are using right now, uh, if the client project comes with a requirement you have to use Redux, then we use Redux. If they just come with like basic requirement without any technical specs, we use Mobux. Why do you find Mobux by an So uh, Redux is based on functional programming, first thing, and uh, I come from an object-oriented uh, background, so uh, Mobux follows object-oriented pattern. And it's pretty easy, you know, like in Redux to make a simple change. Say if you want to implement a value, you have to write uh, an action creator, you have to write a reducer and do a lot of things. In Mobux, you just add at the rate observable uh, with that counter value and everything happens all by itself. You should just have a look at that. Yeah, for Redux, how easy are tasks like this React Native is for an Android developer or iOS developer because we are not web developers. Because these are the components I'm very new listening <laughs> first time. Okay, not even Angular JS I don't know, but JavaScript basics only I know. Okay. So how tough it is? Uh, if we have any knowledge of JavaScript, it won't be that difficult. Uh, but uh, learning uh, React will take a little time, uh, and then state management around it will also take a little time. So since you are a programmer, uh, it may take about a month or so to get into this level. It's not that difficult. Uh, because it's very, very, uh, not as strict as Android development. Uh, I remember I have tried building apps with Android like for four or five times, and then I was like, no, I will wait for a JavaScript framework. So it's not that difficult, it's pretty straightforward. Great, anything else? Same question. Okay, so we have only few developers, so we'll ask them. What ID do you prefer for JavaScript and React, React Native and all those things? 
VS Code, Microsoft Fans, Visual Studio, Visual Studio, <laughs> okay, VS Code, okay. I prefer Sublime because Atom is really, really, oh. really like say if you don't turn your P like PC off for two or three days, it becomes really slow. Yeah, that's eventually you have to turn it off and turn it on again. So Sublime, I feel, is pretty good because of comments. Maybe. So Jet Price has a very uh, right. 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 Click on all modules and it takes three minutes for it to open. So VS Code is good. Now. Yeah, VS Code is really good. And, uh, the way Microsoft has changed its space in past like six months or one year, like they are doing a brilliant job there. Like with Code Push and VS Code, like they are also contributing to the open source. Really good, yeah. So we use Sublime for speed, yeah. <laughs> and Atom and UPI for uh, like ESLint and all those things because. The plugin, the Lintgate plugin is official by Facebook and it has a lot of suggestions and all those things. So Lintgate is there. Yeah. So it's really good. The VS Code is also picking up really quick. And we also have snippets available of native ways for all the three elements, Atom, Sublime and VS Code. Great. Thanks. Okay. Do you follow certain structure? React, React Native, anything? Or it may be just JavaScript. Do you follow any folder structure with all these things? Uh, trying to get it. Trying to get it, okay. Then? Trying to follow a structure. Okay. Okay. Sri Raman, why don't you come here? <laughs> we have an empty place. Okay, come. Okay. Fine, maybe you can share some. Uh, maybe we'll put it on native base page and all those things. 
No, it's a new thing. So it's it won't work with existing one. You you'll have to port it manually. For the new projects you can use it. But uh, for the new projects anyhow we have to do just one command, right? You just give the module like with your npm install and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, npm install that's fine. But uh, after that uh, for each library there will be a different kind of configuration we have to follow. Like uh, for one signal we have to uh, uh, have the configuration uh, which where it uh, like takes the your app ID and uh, just creates an instance where uh, you can use that instance to send push notifications. So uh, this framework will uh, create that, uh, like initialize that uh, one signal uh, component and uh, it will just create uh, an instance and it will make it available for your app. So you can just use it anyway. So NPM just gets you fine, but this framework and the CLI around it will get you the file and as well as it will bootstrap those uh, libraries. Like for Redux, you need to do create store and provide that provider component. So it will do all those things for you. So, so in fact, in web services, uh, yes. we use uh, Retrofitter, Warrior, such kind of frameworks in Android. Okay. So any <coughs> such kind of stuff, plugins we will use here from NPM? Yeah, that uh, we have a very nice patch API, which is uh, ES6 standard. So you can use that, but there are other libraries as well, like Exios, Super Agent, and all those things. Depends on the project. So, uh, that will be purely converted to a simple HTTP connection in yes. Java. Yes, exactly like that. You just get, get some JSON data and then you can convert it. Okay. Uh, next. Okay. Testing. Okay, this is an open question, not related to React, to React Native. Uh, do you guys test and how do you test it? Or you just leave it, okay? I trust my code, it will work. <laughs> so how many of you use test? Do you write test cases? You write. All of you write test cases? Okay. We are the only ones who do <laughs> <laughs> We are very confident our code will work. <laughs> Great, so which framework do you use? For React, we are using this. Okay. For server side, I am using super easy. Okay. How about you guys? So we use Loom. basic level of testing. Uh, we need to implement this in our organization, so I wanted to hear from you guys. Okay. Basically, I don't know about web or uh, JavaScript how to test, but in, in usually our terminologies of Java, we will do module uh -huh. level testing like uh, models where data will carry forward. Okay. Those will be tested with JUnit testing. And web related, I don't know which way we used. And uh, if at all, we need to replace any web related things with some mock objects, mock it all, these kind of things will be used. But in JavaScript, uh, is there any such kind of frameworks will be available to use? Yes, we have this and all those things. We have a lot of testing libraries like available actually. Uh, uh, and do you guys use any kind of uh, online services for emulators which you give to your testers? Uh, like RM Play or something? Yes, in Amazon device. Amazon device. So they provide you uh, yeah, online the device. device so you, you can just plug into that and. Uh, Test it on your browser. Yes, 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 yes. So I did not test it. Of course, they are supporting you. Uh, like you update the uh, your file to the You will test different uh, devices. Mm -hmm. It is also an idea of how it is configured to do my components of there. Using file to send to the file. And browser stack? Browser stack? Oh. And use it just once. Just once. To check the compatibility of those devices. Mm -hmm. Nothing much. I, so I, <laughs> do you guys still support Internet Explorer? 
No. <laughs> uh, we have to actually because I was working on a particular product which is for a big agency actually. So like uh, most of the employees work on IE only. Here is a bit more about it. So we had been to this Web Summit event this year uh, in Lisbon, Portugal. So we exhibited there with uh, Native Base. So here we have Pratik, Atul, and Meka. They're the co-founders. Uh, and uh, we just demoed that. And people were really interested uh, in Native Base and the clone apps. We got uh, in touch with many guys after the event as well. Then, that's it. Yeah. And we have collaboration with the guys from Facebook. So uh, Barton Hammond, uh, he has a very nice baller play for React Native uh, called a Snowflake. Uh, we are working with him. Then we have Mike Grabowski. Uh, he's a speaker. Uh, he works at Hallstack. And he's the guy who publishes React Native to NPM. And then we have Gant. Uh, I spoke to this guy uh, in one of the React online meetups. So, he works at Infinite Red, and they have a very nice uh, CLI called Ignite. Mm -hmm. You can use Ignite to uh, scaffold or bootstrap your React Native application. Then we have Devin Abbott. So this guy is the CEO of uh, Deco Software. Deco is an ID of React Native, uh, which is really nice. Give it a try. And uh, this was just uh, this is a picture from React Native meetup in San Diego, uh, which was about a month ago, and we sponsored that. They're wearing the same t-shirt. That's Not the same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so here's Mike Grubaski, this guy. And it was nice. Then we also got uh, comments from Microsoft. If you are looking to get started with React Native and Code Push, and you're looking for an awesome startup, you should check out Native Startup. This, this is on their uh, Code Push readme file on GitHub. Great. Uh, I think that's it. Anything else? See, why React got famous was only because of its component-based architecture. So you can always split your code into multiple components and use it uh, at one place or split them into files. So, can you want to reduce the size of the application? So can we just get a screen for the assets from the server itself? I don't want to keep anything on the front end. So that the size, so I can the size of the app on the mobile is very small, but the actual, the actual size is very large, which is coming from the Yes, you can do that. So. There is a service, there are actually multiple services. One is Code Push, another is uh, App, what app, something like that. Okay. So, uh, what is it? App Hub. App Hub and Code Push. These services let you update the app on flight. So, the users don't need to update the uh, app from the App Store or Play Store. Okay. And it just happens whenever, whenever you open the app, it just downloads the latest build and then gets you the app. But, but it's still. Uh I don't want to like make uh, Out of the 200, you can want one screen to be there on the user's mobile, yeah. and the rest of the screens will come whenever the UI, the user is clicking on clicking on those screens. Yeah. So is it possible that these uh, app and uh, yeah, it, it is very much possible. You can have lazy loading of the screens, uh, but you'll have to hack things around. It does not come built in with React Native, but you can easily do that. Actually, we did that in one of the projects. Uh, we had a dynamic form builder. Uh, so from the backend, we had the data coming in field 1, type uh, string, uh, max length 20, then field 2, uh, name this, and the type uh, integer. And then we built the form in React Native using that JSON data. So you can always do that. Is it only possible in React Native kind of paper, or can we do it in uh, native apps as well? I have no clue. The guys who use native, I guess, you can answer that. Sure. I think you can. Huh? So, <laughs> so Flipkart uh, released an open source library uh, called Proteus. When they are uh, uh, getting the uh, layout uh, from Mahman and then rendering the layout. Uh, I think maybe this is a fair view. Right? It's not a fair view. Yeah. No. It's yeah. a yeah. 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 Instead of yeah. XML, they're getting a JSON online and then uh, converting into XML and then. What is that? Proteus. 
LinkedIn did that actually. In their native iOS app, they did that. So few of the screens got on the device and few of the screens which were rendering from the back end. It was native screen. Okay. Anything else? That's it from our side. Maybe you guys can, if anyone wants to give some kind of lightning talk or something, can come here and share you. Yeah. I think it would be a very basic question for you guys. So, uh, still this React Native, it doesn't solve a problem where you can port the same code for both Android and iOS platforms. Still, you have to write a code for both subject right? Because it uses the native components at the end. So, the native components are different for Android and iOS platforms. Yes. So, basically, we need to write code separately for this. Mm -hmm. So, we need to maintain. Use this. Okay. <laughs> It'll solve your problem. So, if we won't use it. So, definitely, we uh, have to write conditions. Yes. Yeah, just for the UI components. Yes. For the UI components, if you are... Your logic will be intact for uh, uh, both the iOS and Yeah. Uh, fine, because anyway, logic also you will be writing in Java. I mean, scripting yeah. language, right? Yeah. When it comes to React Native. So that, is, that might be safe for uh, yeah. Android and But when it comes to components, I mean, I mean to say UI, yeah. it should still be different, right? So we should maintain still different code base for the, when it comes to UI. Yeah. Even though we use React Native. Yes. Yeah. Most of the things you can achieve using native base or uh, other UI libraries. But if you have like, if you want hamburger menu, which is a specific to Android platform, then you'll have to write conditionals. Sir. Because what I read uh, from uh, React Native, like, they say like, uh, what is it? once user. Uh, no, no, that was earlier. Write once user earlier. Yeah. Learn but once that gives you yeah, learn once and write everywhere. That's yes. what React Native says, right? Yes. So, so React, like, uh, Facebook guys, they recommend building user interface separately for both the platforms. But wherever you have common things, you should write one common code. Okay. So, uh, okay. adding to that, so we can have one single React Native project where we can keep uh, both Android and iOS together. Yes. But we can build uh, app for APK for this guy and uh, yes. app for iOS. Yes, that, that's how we do. We have one single code base for both the platforms, and whenever we need uh, platform specific things, we just name the file as. Uh, say you have component ABC, we name it as abc.android.js and abc.ios.js. So when you import ABC, it checks which platform are you on and then imports that particular file. Okay. So is that something already there? Yes, it's there, it's there, with, yeah, it's there with React Native. Okay. It checks the extension of the file and loads up that particular file depending on the platform. Okay. Okay. And we always maintain one single code. We don't have two separate repos or uh, two versions of that. So you are very closer to the native UI when you are working on the RSC and the It is actually native UI. It, it is not a web view. So whatever a native app gets you, the same user interface React Native gets you. So it is in JSX? Yes, JSX. Yeah. Using JSX, you can just code uh, view, text, and all those things. And it will get you the uh, platform equivalent of that. So uh, basically, say if I want to call an API, say through fetch or something, and put the values in my store. So now, as the size of your project keeps on increasing, maintaining this is a big task, right? Like what should you call and when should you call the APIs? So uh, I was working on something lately. On the back end, we maintain a GraphQL server, and front end, we, we, we try to use something new by Facebook. It's called uh, Relay, right? Relay, yeah. So over there, the that is a bit complicated, but once you get how it works, it's pretty easy to call the APIs, maintain a store, right? Yes. So do you guys plan to use it in future anytime? Yes, we are actually experimenting right now with GraphQL. Mm -hmm. So we will definitely give it a shot. But right now we are more focused towards front-end and app structuring and all those things. But it's on our list. is a CSS or UI framework built for web. React Native is a framework for building the entire application. It's not just the UI. Building the entire application? Yeah, and the entire application. It provides you bridging logic so that your JavaScript code can talk to the native layer and then get information from it. But Bootstrap is just the UI components. Okay. So uh, it's the uh, same thing as uh, Angular? Something like that? Uh, Angular, yes. React Native. Uh, React is like Angular, not React Native. So React Native 
compares to native script, which is a uh, Angular framework for building native mobile applications. Yes. Uh, in Android, we have the flexibility of uh, creating our own content providers, which will interact with the databases and uh, service. They will be, I can generate one application, which can be used by multiple applications in my mobile. Mm -hmm. So I will develop most of the service layer in that. Mm -hmm. And one is content provider layer. And uh, there is another application which will use, uh, applications which will use them through intent mechanism, yes. whatever they do, like uh, RPC, IF, uh, IPC. Mm -hmm. So in JavaScript, how we can achieve that? So in React Native, in React Native. yeah, in React Native, everything compiles down to native code. So whatever you can do it there, you can definitely do it here. You just need to write the bridge from JavaScript layer to the same service provider which you wrote in Java. The exact same thing, you can call it from JavaScript and run the Java code there and it will get your responses here. So in React Native also we will develop multiple these kind of applications yes. and uh, link them in the uh, JavaScript way. Yes, exactly. If you are comfortable with Java uh, mode for writing Android application or writing the background <laughs> services in Java, you can always do that with React Native. Write it in Java and bridge it using React Native. Okay, means some stuff in Android which we can call through yes. JavaScript. Yes, yes. Great. Is that all? No? No questions, no discussion? Yes. So, any, any, any time since you guys already have uh, uh, working on uh, the React Native, so anything you felt like, I mean, some performance overhead because of React Native compared to Native? I mean, any places where you feel that, okay, Native, uh, implementing in Native would have been better than React Native? Any, basically, any disadvantages or anything that you felt? Uh, See, if you know Android or the native languages, you can always use that. But uh, since we are from a web background, so we prefer doing it in JavaScript engine mode. Say, if you have a socket connection, like socket or type. So it's always good to uh, to have the socket connection on the native code rather than on the JavaScript engine. Uh, so whenever we uh, see like if there is a problem of performance or something, we always hook it to the native code and use APIs from there. But the chances or the probability of using native code is very less because you always get a bridge library in JavaScript. You can just install it using uh, npm and then our npm link that thing which just hooks the native code for you. So we don't really work directly with native anytime. I heard there is no more framework called Xamarin. Xamarin, yeah. Xamarin is really good and uh, Microsoft fans are using it. Uh, so those who are very comfortable using C Sharp uh, they are using so it's the React Native of C sharp. Okay, it's, it uses the same. Language is different. Sorry. The way of coding language is different. Yes, the coding language is different, but more or less it has the same architecture as of React Native. Uh, you had a question. Yeah. Uh, call it the build like you know, off of the screen like native, off mm -hmm. of the screen like React uh, Native. Both can be passed with parallel yeah. I have a question. <laughs> Yes, we can have that. So React Native provides two types of bridging. Okay, One is to bridge to the background services, wherein it does not give you any UI component. And then second is bridging UI components, in which, say, if there's something available in Native, a UI component, you can wrap that as a React Native component and then use it in your React Native code. So both the things coexist. Okay. Uh, Sriram, maybe you can share your, because launch your watch app, right? Huh? Maybe you can just share that with everyone. A little bit. Huh? <laughs> okay. I really liked your article, One Year with React Native. It was very much detailed. That is more of a so the audience will Yeah, but you can just share how you built the watch app for React Native. Little bit, just yes. So, I am working with, uh, yeah, I am Sri Raman, I am working with a company called Bitworks. Uh, we are making a smartwatch. Um, we are working with React Native for past one and a half years. So, um, so there is a companion app for our smartwatch. So the companion app is fully built with React Native. Um, so whatever we are writing in the native code, we can just bridge it. Uh, for example, in our case, we have different Bluetooth protocols. We won't get those things available in React Native at all. 
So we put those things in the Java layer and we just bridged it with this and UA is uh, UA we are just using the React Native JSX itself and So and there's a problem with React Native and performance. If you are making anything in fully in JavaScript, there will be definitely some um, performance issues. But we cannot avoid. So if we face some performance issue in some places, for example, issue component. In Android, you are using a recycler view. There is no implementation for recycler view in React Native. So still we are building. And so we have tried different kind of implementation, nothing gave uh, like native performance at all. So just for the component, we are using, um, we have a case called, um, we have a music player in Sierra Lab. So there will be two thousand songs uh, in single page. We tried to populate it with React Native directly, but we couldn't achieve it, it was very slow. If we scroll, it will load later, those kind of things happen. Then we decided just for that particular view, we used native component and just we embedded the native component inside our view. So that goes. So we didn't face um, much of the issue. Whenever we have a problem, we have an Android developer or iOS developer, so whenever we have a problem with performance, we are just shifting that to native part. But 80% of the code are in JavaScript only. Someone asked, right, how do you navigate between the screens? How do you navigate between the screens? Like, which package do you use for that? Yeah, actually, uh, we have used different navigators available for React Native. Uh, we have used Navigator, iOS, that's basically for iOS. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.